Right, hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. And today you join me on the banks of a new water for me. It's Village Pool on the Lim Anglers card. It's a water that I've walked around once or twice, but never ever fished. When I walked around the waters, it was a, a, one of the two or three waters that stood out to me as ones that I like the look of. So today we're going to get a chance to fish it. And I get a lot of questions on the blog about how to approach new waters. How, how do I approach a brand new water? And this is what I do. I get up, literally first light. If you look over there, the gear is still in the car. I don't know whether you heard there, there's a woodpecker over there somewhere and in probably a couple of minutes the sun's going to come over that hill and what I'm looking for is any signs of fish topping it's quite a it's not a huge water but I'm looking for any clues as to where to start for example if I see a load of fish topping over there I'll set up a nap peg if I see fish topping down here then obviously we'll be looking in this area and already, as you can see there, he's carp jumping clear out the water over there. And that's within the first, what, two minutes? I think I've been maybe talking on this bit, probably less. And already we've seen, a, you know, some activity from the fish. And you're just looking for a place to start, really. Down there, I think, you see a couple of fish something's bubbling down there so it says to me that the, the pool is awake and the fish are moving so i'm just going to stand here for probably 10 10 minutes and watch the water and people talk about the magic of fishing and it's not all about the fish that you catch for me it's that first hour of, of morning is is a beautiful time to be awake i mean if i just leave the camera just for a couple of seconds and if you just listen and it is a beautiful time to be awake especially as spring is waking up and the birds are singing and I don't know if you caught it on the corner of the screen but Mr Carp has just been jumping over there again so he's definitely awake but today we are after silvers as well so I am just looking for any smaller fish that could be topping Right, so on the peg now, and I stood on top of that bank for about 10 15 minutes. And you know, been in work all week, just sat there and chilled out for 10 15 minutes, just listening to the world go by. Um, looking at the water, and there was an area I didn't see much down the shallow end, which I think is the shallow end. Um, I seen quite a lot of activity around that tree on the far bank, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but in the middle of the pool, I've seen quite a few, you know, I think the roach topping and they weren't tiny little, you know, like little tiny little roach. They were, they were okay sized fish. So I've set up right in the middle of the pool. And if you don't see anything on your pool, the middle is always the best place to set up. That being that you've got fish both sides of you and you're not in one corner where they might not come across you. In the middle they can come from both sides and find your area of feed so what we'll do now we'll have a quick look at the swim and how we're going to approach it but before we do um a lot of lads on the channel like hearing about how i my thought process about what i think might happen um i think it's going to be a lot different than the last blog where we were you know catching them little small carp and there's a certain somebody who commented on the video so if you want to watch that last blog, it's in the top corner. Can't go wrong with that one. And yeah, it was an enjoyable session today. 
I'm hoping to catch a few roach, you know, some silvers, and maybe we might have a bit of a go for one of them carp that were jumping by that snag on the far bank. But how do I think it's going to go? I'm hopeful of a few bites. Um, it's not too deep, and there is a lot of movement on the water, so I would expect to get one or two bites today. So let's have a look at the setup and how we're going to approach the swim. Right, so there's the swim for today. And look at that, with the sun coming through them trees at the back, doesn't that look beautiful? And it is a beautiful, quiet place to fish. There is a road at the top of there. I'm hoping it doesn't get too busy, because it, it is a quiet, nice little place to fish. I see most of the fish topping around this area here, but I am fishing the pole. Uh, maybe I should have brought the rod to try this area. But the fish are moving quite a bit, so I'm, I'm expecting we can get them a bit closer in. Um, and of course, I saw Mr. Carp jump in there. And as you can see in the middle of the screen, a fish is just top there. So that's the swim. Let's have a look at the tactics that we're going to do today. Right, so set up for today, and as I say, I'm fishing the pole. I've got Drennan Aqua Elastic. I've got three pound mainline to a 1.25 gram float. I've got that fish down to a Dinsmore bulk shot with two sticks and then two number 12 droppers on the line down to a tiny size 20 hook. And I did chuck me feeder rod in and I see Mr. Carp on the far bank and I'm glad I did. So what I've done is I've set up a Dinsmore scoop feeder and a buffer bead and we're just going to put a small method feeder rig on that and I've made up some pellets and um, maybe we'll start on the silvers and maybe we might have a cheeky chuck for Mr Carp later on. Right so side tray for today and this is the normal side tray that I would bring to a water that doesn't allow ground bait. I've got some micro pellets obviously for the carp later on but if I start hitting you know a skimmer then I can put some of that in to try and attract some better skimmers into the swim because I don't know what I'm going to catch today Cheshire particle hemp and I've got about a pint and a half of red maggot and maggot catches everything if you want to get a cross picture of a water then maggots hemp and ground bait or pellets is a good starting point for any water so let's make a start so after location feeding is the next important thing in my opinion rigs sometimes you can get away with um, I might need tuning but how you feed the swim can determine your results and I'm just starting with about that many maggots in the swim just to try and see what's in front of me right so that first put in of the day I'm starting off lining up with that tree over there and I fished quite close in because then I can feed the swim by hand and that noise I'm hoping of a few maggots going in will attract fish into the area and you might have to wait a while for the bite with a water that's like this that's in a dip it's not going to be mega warm but it's not too deep and I think that's why it's awake but one of the first things I always do on a venue is start easy it's a lesson that my uncle taught me um, as a fish with him on the river always start closer in and if you have to go further out do so later on but always start easy because you never know if you can get them there it's much easier than fishing the full length for your pole all the way out there so what I'm going to do to start off with is there's a bite straight away is just feed little and often probably five or six maggots every put in into the swim just to try like I always say on the blogs to find out what's in front of you and like most sessions you start off with quite a small fish but I've certainly seen bigger topping and I'm hoping today that the hemp 
will attract them better fish and better fish do tend to always live on the bottom and feed on the bottom so that's why I've also fished a bulk shot to fish the bottom layers so we'll go straight back out again and that's a good start that is you know it's only a small fish but it's a fish I was expecting to be honest with you to sit maybe an hour without a bite I was prepared to sit an hour or two without a bite and that's just gone straight away so again just feeding a few maggots by hand I've put a couple of grains of hemp in at the start not too much and um, we'll just keep going over the top of that bait and feeding five or six maggots and just try and work out what's in front of us what you don't want to do when you get a bite that quickly is get carried away because it's very easy to start chucking loads of bait in and killing the swim and there's a bite straight away so there's a few fish already down there what's nice about this lake is it's got quite a dark background and when you're fishing your you know a float that's what you can always look for if you've got a lovely dark background to fish against it makes seeing your float so much easier than picking if you look to the left it's quite silverish where I'm fishing there is a dark a dark background so when I fish in the swim I'll always pick try and pick somewhere with a dark background like that and the second fish of the day is already a bit of a, a bit of a better one and that is a lovely roach that I wouldn't mind catching them all day today if that is the average stamp that we caught today I'd leave a happy man So I just popped the cad pot on and fed probably a couple of micros, not too many. And after a few small perch like you've seen, I've had a few smaller roach. Just to caught this better skimmer. And that tells you a lot about the swim that. Fed them a few micros and like I said, when I was going over the bait tray if you get one or two of these then it lets you know that there is a few in the water and you can start feeding micros as well as the hemp into the swim because it tells you that obviously where these small skimmers there's a good chance there's one or two bream maybe in the swim in the water so by having that bit of different bait and looking at the species that you catch you can begin to work out how you want to feed the swim. Skimmer coming, it tells me, like I said, there's one or two skimmers in the water. So still feeding a pinch of maggots, a pinch of hemp, and now just introducing just a few micros like that, not too many, just to feed a few into the swim. I think if you put too many in, you've got a chance that obviously you're going to attract Mr. Carp in. And ideally I want Mr. Carp to stay over there for when I have a go for him on the feeder later on. I don't really want to be catching carp on, on this line if I can help it. I want to try and target the silvers and the skimmers. But just feeding that little bit of pellet into the swim will definitely keep them skimmers interested. The very next fish after that skimmer is another better fish. So you can just see how the swim is building we started off with them really small fish and a better stamp of fish has moved in and like I said earlier on in the video that's very early on that given how this water is in a bit of a dip I did think we'd wait maybe an hour or two for the bite so the session is going really well let's take a look at this roach and there we go against that sun on the far bank there's that lovely roach and it has been a great start
and just into another, I think it's a roach. And already having great fun on this water. It surpassed my expectations this morning with how quickly the bites have come and with fish like that roach there and if you can see it on the camera certainly is my type of water right so just hit a fish and it's gone straight out the swim I don't think it's a carp but it didn't half pull the elastic out when it went I'm just going to take my time and try and get it and try and get it in it didn't half bolt out the swim oh it's a nice roach <coughs> let's take a look at it and there we go there's that roach an absolutely lovely fish if it's close to a pound if not over it's an absolutely lovely fish and yeah made my morning that you know in the surroundings with all the the wildlife around me yeah yeah that is a result let's get it straight back and when you're fishing with a bulk olivet like you can see in the top of the screen now baits like hemp heavy baits become even more important because what you're basically relying on is you're ignoring all the fish that are up in the in your swim the bulk shot is to get through them hopefully smaller fish you know in the upper layers of the swim to the better quality ones that are on the bottom that is a beautiful roach that is and most certainly the hemp is attracting these fish into the swim and hopefully it'll be the hemp that attracts a few more in and keeps them in Another one of them fish that's just bolted out the swim. Almost certainly a roach by the jagged fight. Oh, it is, it's a nice roach, it's better than the last one. And really is a sign of the times. As a kid, we would have walked miles for places like this. And if you look around, there's not a soul on. And that, that's a stonking roach that. Let's take a closer there look at go. it. Oh, there's that lovely roach. And certainly, come October time, September, October, be back on this venue with hemp and tears, most certainly. This fish isn't alone, because we've already had one other, but there could be potential for the very special days roach fishing on here. That is a lovely fish. Let's get it straight back. And this is developing into a, a really good, silver session getting plenty of them skimmers and every so often one of these better roach and it has been it's been great fun <laughs> it really has it's been it's a it's a pool that i've never fished before but it feels like a trip down memory lane to when i was a kid fishing these type of places and it's weird but it has been an enjoyable day's fishing it's, it's been a bite of chuck so far the odd smaller fish but since we, these better stamp have moved in it's been fantastic fishing so sometimes on the videos on YouTube when you're condensing a whole day into what is in essence you know 15 to 20 minutes 
a video it can seem like it's you know a bite a truck but this up to this point on the video it really has been uh, as soon as that Olivet swung into the swim into them lower layers uh, you know I've had a bite I've missed quite a lot of bites as well but yeah it has been a bite a chuck and as you've seen on the, the video the the quality of the fish has improved as the session's gone on and we started off with them tiny tiny little roach and now we're getting you know nice size skimmers every time we go in or uh, if it goes quiet for a bit that's when we seem to get one of them better roach once you've got the fish in the swim keeping them there is the main thing and that's where your balance of your feeding comes in so you're feeding enough to get a bite but not too much that you'd overfeed the swim and when we said at the start about judging how many fish you know and in the area there's quite a lot of fish in the swim now the floats moving all the time and getting plenty of indication that there's a lot of fish in the swim and we've had quite a few bites today but the swim now is absolutely alive with them and it's fantastic fishing Nothing you learn by actually being on the banks of new waters isn't so much about what we've caught in the swim today it's about being on the water like on the far side over there i've seen fry scattering all over the place that says to me there might be one or two nice perch in here and of course we've had them carp jumping all on the far bank and that's just from spending time on the water and what we'll have to do is come back here with just the carp rather than say a method feeder and have a go for the carp and just sit and wait cast into the far bank and see if we can just get a few of them i think that would be an interesting you know session to do on here so as you can see we've had plenty of bites on this first session on this water and we'll call this fish the last fish of the day and it looks like we're finishing on a rud on a golden rud it looks like what a beautiful fish that is and a lovely fish to end the blog on what a lovely fish that is look at the colors on that so let's take a look at that final net and see how there we go done. there's a the final net some lovely roach and plenty of skimmers and an enjoyable morning on the bank on a new venue i'm gonna have an hour for the carp now so if there's a bit of the video left at the end then you know i've had one but if not sight lines in your own fishing and i'll catch you all next time